Welcome back to my classroom, everyone. In today's grief art journal lesson, I'm going to be sharing an activity for drawing memories that are associated with the loss of a loved one or any other loss that you may have experienced. Now, this is especially a great lesson for those of you who are new to drawing, those of you who think you can't be any good at art because you can't draw. I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for you. This is also a great lesson for those of you who are wanting to learn a little bit more about decorating those background pages. I know in my last lesson, I shared a couple of different techniques and today I'm going to continue on with our tile and mosaic theme and show you a really cool way to decorate your backgrounds with some neon colors. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Erin Willer, your griever teacher. Go ahead and get started. You are my red, you are my yellow, you are my flower, your colors are all... First part of our lesson today includes making a list of items that remind you of the person that you lost or reminds you of that experience of loss that you may be focusing on. These items can be things that reminded you of the loved one that you lost. So for example, these might be pieces of clothing, they might be a favorite piece of furniture that they had, it might be a gift that they gave you. These can also be items that when you think about them, they bring you a lot of joy, but they can also be items that when you're reminded of them, they bring you some pain as well. For now, I don't need you to dig into that pain or into that joy. We're simply going to make that list and just get down as many items that we can in a couple of minutes. So what you're gonna see me do here, for those of you who watched my first video, you know that in my grief art journal, I am working on processing the loss of my dad who died 30 years ago when I was 12 years old. So here, you're going to see me writing down a number of different items that remind me of my dad. Now our second step in our lesson, once we have made our list of items that remind us of our loss, is going to be to draw some of those items. Now I know that drawing can be really intimidating for many people, particularly those who don't practice drawing or don't think of themselves as a creative person. So what I'm going to do here is show you some tips and tricks for what I do in order to help myself draw. Okay, so what you're going to see me do here is I am in Google Images and here, I don't want to be on Google. I don't want to be in images specifically. So it's google.com forward slash IMGHP. And when you're in the search bar, you're going to type in whatever it is that you want to draw. So for me, I'm going to type in Oldsmobile Cutlass because I am going to give a shot at drawing my dad's Oldsmobile Cutlass that he used to have and reminds me of him. So his kind of look like this. And as you can see here from what I have pulled up, these are all real cars. And while I certainly can use them in order to support me in my drawing, what I find a lot easier is if we actually go back up to the search bar and type in drawing. That way, when we hit enter, we're going to get drawings of cars, which will give you a model for what your drawing can look like. Now, if I, as I scroll down, you'll get a number of different options. And I'm gonna go up here because this one is the one that reminds me of my dad's cut list the most. So if I click on this, you'll see that it'll bring me to the actual website where the image is embedded. And I tend to find all of this extra information a little bit distracting. So instead of clicking on the image, I like to do a right click, which will then allow me to open the image in a new tab and then I can pull it up and have a nice clean look. And this is basically what I use to support myself in drawing. And you can go and do this for any of the images that you are wanting to draw. So for example, another one of my items that I'm wanting to draw for this project is a turtleneck because I remember my dad saying one time how much he hated wearing turtlenecks and how constricting they were. So I'm gonna type turtleneck drawing and I'm even gonna type in the word easy afterward to see if there's any drawings that have been tagged with easy 
that might make it um, a little bit easier on myself. Um, so something like this is even very simple and gives my eyes something to focus on. Now I do want to say that whenever you have a copywritten image, it's not okay to draw this and sell it um, as your own, but it is certainly okay to use it for your own personal use in order to give you a little bit of help when you are working on your journal. Now, as you watch me drawing through, I want to say just a couple of things about drawing and the challenges people seem to have around it. Now, I always tell my students that one of the reasons why people see themselves as no good at art or not having any artistic capabilities is because they can't draw. So one thing we want to think about with this narrative is that many people aren't good at drawing because they don't practice it. It's not something that they sit down and dedicate a number of hours to doing. So just like anything else, it's hard to get good at drawing unless you practice it. So my one tip, if you wanna become good at drawing, is to actually practice it over and over and over again. Now, the other thing I wanna say about drawing, again, that I always tell my students is, drawing is just one kind of art form. There are so many other ways to be creative. And so if drawing isn't your thing, then try something else. And that's really the purpose of my whole channel is to teach you a number of different ways to be creative, particularly related to grief. But if you don't want to draw, pick up a pair of knitting needles. If that doesn't work out for you, then try some woodworking. Anything that can kind of get your hands and your mind and your heart moving are great ways to be creative. Now, the other thing that I want to say is that most people think that they're not good at drawing because they think they're supposed to be able to just automatically, off the top of their heads, manifest something on the page that looks exactly like it does in real life. Now, there are some incredible artists out there in the world who can do that, that can draw and make things look exactly the way that they do in person, but many of us can't, including me. And so, one of the things that I have had to do in addition to using Google Images to have something to look at and in addition to practicing it over and over again is to let go a little bit of the idea that I have to draw something exactly the way that it looks in real life. And so I allow my drawings to have some imperfections, to be a little bit wonky. And the other thing is that I have to constantly remind myself, particularly with drawing, is that if I want my art and my drawing to be a space of healing and grieving, I've got to be able to let go of the perfectionism a little bit. I try so hard to a fault in many areas of my life to get things exactly right. And again, I have found that in order for my art to be a place of healing, I've got to let go of that a little bit. And so you're going to see that theme in my work that I share with you and I try to remind you over and over again that your work doesn't have to be perfect either. As you're working through your project, one of the things that I encourage you to do is to not just think about the memories that are associated with these items, but also to share those memories either through writing or through talking with other people about them. Giving language to those memories is a really powerful way to make sense of your memories that are living in your head, to be able to get them out of your head, in your heart, and onto the page in front of you is so incredibly powerful. So one of the things I'll do here as you see me work is I'd like to share with you some of the memories associated with the drawings that I did for this project. I told you about my dad's Cutlass Supreme and that it was blue um, and it was big and embarrassing. And one of my favorite memories about it was the time when my dad had picked me up from school and it was before you had to wear seat belts and I remember laying in the back seat of the car and not feeling really well and all of a sudden I just threw up everywhere. And when we got home, my dad made my sister clean it up and she 
likes to give me a hard time about that. And so it's become a positive, fun memory for both her and I to share together something that makes us smile about our dad. You'll also notice that many of the items that I drew are food items. So you'll see that I have a prime rib steak, um, which I've been a vegetarian for eight years now, but I can still taste the prime rib. I drew a bowl of clam chowder, a plate of mastacholi. These are all items that remind me of my dad because when my parents got divorced the year before he died, we always went out to Tuesday night dinner with him to a couple of different places. One was called the Bistro, one was called the Ground Round. And no matter where we went, the food that we got there seemed to always be the same. And he used to call me his little chow hound because even though I was this little kid, I would just inhale all of this food in front of me. And while those times were positive and I have these great memories of eating together, they're also overshadowed a little bit by another one of the items that I have. So you'll see that one of the things that I drew was a Bloody Mary. And because of my dad's alcoholism, he used to try to hide his drinking in some ways. And one of the ways that that happened is when we would go out to eat at these restaurants, in front of us to the waitress, he would order a Virgin Mary. So that is, you know, a drink that doesn't have alcohol in it. But then... With no fail, he would get up or whisper to the waitress a little bit later that he really wanted a Bloody Mary, that he really wanted the alcohol in it. And, you know, even though he was trying to do it in secret, my sister and I always knew that that's what he was doing. And this hiding of alcohol comes up again in another one of my drawings, which is the filing cabinet in his room that he had, or office that he had in our house, he had this filing cabinet and he had this bottle of vodka or, you know, several bottles of vodka um, that he would go upstairs and he'd fill up his glass with ice cubes and then he'd go downstairs into his office and open up the filing cabinet drawer and fill up his glass. And again, you know, we all knew what was in the filing cabinet and we always knew that it was there, but it was just the way that it was for him hidden in. I'm sure he was hiding his drinking in these ways because of the incredible shame that he had. And so as I'm thinking about it today, you know, these drawings and being able to think about and talk about the hidden nature of his drinking is really helpful for me in thinking about, you know, maybe what was going on for him and that even though at the time that drinking was so hurtful and painful, today when I reflect on it, I'm thinking, wow, there was probably a reason why he was doing that hiding. And that reason was the shame of knowing that he shouldn't be drinking, but that he couldn't stop. Our last step of the lesson and really the way to tie this whole project together is to come up with what I call the title, or for me, it really feels like a mantra. And I'm going to show you how I stamp out my title or my mantra for this page. But when you think about it, I really encourage you to think about what is the theme of all of your drawings coming together? What is it that kept coming to you as you were working on this project? And for me, you know, the theme is really on remembering my dad, remembering those things that are both positive and bring me great warmth when I think of them, but also those things that make me bristle a little bit and still have a little bit of pain surrounding them. And as I was working on my pages for this lesson, what really started coming to me was this idea that as I remember my dad, I not only remember him, 
but I remember myself. I remember who I was when I was younger. And in that, I see and remember who we are as a father and a daughter. So you'll see here that the title or the mantra or the theme of my pages is remember. And as I was practicing this and figuring out what size stamps I was going to use, I love the idea of making um, me stick out of the remember and then putting you. So remember me and you as a way of representing the remembrance and the coming together of my relationship with my dad and also remembering who I am in relationship to him. That's it for our lesson today. I hope that this was really helpful in allowing you some new techniques for drawing and helping you understand that even you, even if you're someone who's not creative or not an artist, can also draw. I hope this also helped you start to dig into and uncover some of the memories that may be associated with your losses. And I would love to see your journal pages. So please don't forget to follow me at Griever Teacher PhD on Instagram. You can also use the hashtag Griever Teacher PhD and I will be able to see them there as well. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions or have any feedback to share about what has worked well for you, um, what has challenged you about drawing in the past or uncovering memories associated with your loss. I love talking to my students about what's coming to them, so please go ahead and feel free to comment below. If you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care grievers and griever teachers.